To start with, I'd like to thank you for buying a new Honda HRV. Now, in this handover video, what we're going to cover off for you are the buttons on the outside, the buttons and technology on the inside, and some of those things from a maintenance point of view that you need to be aware of. So when it comes to unlocking and locking your HRV, we've got a couple of ways we can do it. So on the remote, we've got the unlock button, so simply press that, and of course, the car's going to be able to open. When we lock it, just one press will lock those doors. However, if we double press either of these buttons, so for instance, we unlock the car and then press and hold the unlock button, it will wind down the windows and also roll back the panorama roof on this vehicle. If you only wanted the windows part of the way down, you'd just let go of the button and it would stop winding the windows down. Now this is ideal on a hot day, so it lets the, uh, the warm air out of the cabin as you're approaching your vehicle. Now, if we'd switch the car off, we've got out of the vehicle but forgotten to actually put the windows up, we can lock the car and press and hold it a second time, keeping pressure on the button and it will wind the windows up, fold the door mirrors in and close the panorama roof if that was open. Now there's another way you can actually unlock your HRV. So I'm just going to pop this into my pocket and we have the keyless access system on this vehicle. So all I need to do is just pop my hand in behind the door handle and you'll hear it unlock. So now I can open the door and of course the door mirror will unwind as well. And when it comes to locking the vehicle, all I need to do again, as long as the key's in my pocket, a rucksack, whatever it might be in the detection zone, I can push this little button on the side that will lock the car and a second push, just like on the key fob, would actually fold in the door mirrors for me. For those items we need to take a look at from a maintenance point of view underneath the bonnet, first of all, we need to open the bonnet. So by my right foot as a driver, there are two levers. I'm gonna pull the lower one for the bonnet. Now, as we make our way to the front, the release lever is just slightly to the left of the Honda badge. So I just pop under there, pull that across, and the bonnet's up. We'll pop the stay into position. And now, underneath the bonnet, what we have are some items just to keep an eye on. So, first of all is your screen wash reservoir. So we can just keep an eye on that, because obviously that will run down. Next thing along is our brake fluid. So that's just towards the back of the, uh, the vehicle there. The next point across is the dipstick, which is bright orange. So we would recommend that you check the oil every time you fill up with petrol, because that way we know that the engine and the oil is nice and warm, and when you're parked, you're most likely going to be on a level surface. So should it need any, the fill up cap is just slightly to the right of the dipstick. Then something that you would want to check cold would be the coolant levels. So the radiator cap is here and the expansion tank is just down here. Now that we've checked everything under the bonnet, those are the things that we can look at as an owner. Now, of course, your HRV is going to need regular servicing and the schedule for it is 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles. So again, call your dealer and they'll be really happy to get you booked in and have that service carried out. Now, we close the bonnet, so we'll take the bonnet stay out, pop it into its little locator, and the best way to close the bonnet is just to have a little bit of a gap and let it close under its own weight. Okay, so now we're in the car. First thing to do, for me anyway, will be to get the seat adjusted. So I'm just pull this bar at the front, and get myself a little bit closer so I can get some uh, good pressure on the, uh, on the pedals. That seems fine. I think a little bit higher, so I'm just going to pump this lever at the side. Yep, that's good. And a little bit, uh, a little bit more vertical. So yep, that's now a good position. What I'll do now, make sure my head restraint is in the correct position. So I think that could do with being a little bit higher. And that's about the right kind of height. And we do have the ability to bring this forwards. Uh, maybe that's a bit too far. So we'll. Yep, perfect. So the next thing for me, now the seat's done, is to try the seat belt. So now with that uh, plugged in, I can feel it's a little bit high just on the B-pillar. So I'm gonna adjust that down. And again, now that's feeling perfect. Next thing for me is the steering wheel. So I'll pull the little lever just at the uh, 
base of the steering column. There we go, so I've got good reach on the steering wheel and I've got good view of the instruments as well. So to get going, we have keyless start on this particular car. So if we put our foot on the foot brake and press the engine start stop button, we're good to go. Now, because we're in an automatic transmission, so keeping the foot on the foot brake, take it from park, through reverse, neutral, into drive. Now we do have the ability to pop it into sport if you want a little bit more uh, acceleration. I'm gonna leave it in D mode. That's gonna be good for me from a driving point of view. So just behind the shift lever, we have the electronic parking brake and also brake hold. So they work really simply. So when I want to move away, I can put my foot on the foot brake, take the electronic parking brake off with virtually no pressure at all and pop it in D and drive off. And when I come to a stop, so I'm stationary, pull on the parking brake and that's going to engage the motors on the calipers at the rear wheels, keeping us nice and safe and stationary. However, if we press the brake hold button before we uh, set off, so I've got my seatbelt on, engine's running, press brake hold, what this means is I'm not going to have to operate the parking brake on my entire journey. So if I come to a set of traffic lights or maybe a junction where I've come to zero miles now, I've used the brakes to come to a standstill, the car literally holds the brake pressure on for me. And then when I drive away, just by putting some throttle on, it will release that pressure and it means I don't have to worry about putting the parking brake on or off, making it really nice and simple for me. Now, a couple of benefits that we've got for the electronic parking brake. It's really easy and needs hardly any pressure to put on and off, as we've mentioned. It makes it nice and clear from a space point of view uh, inside, and it also offers us the, uh, the secondary braking system that we also need in a car. So if you were moving along and in an emergency, let's say you couldn't get your foot to the, the foot brake for some reason, you can actually pull the electronic parking brake on while you're moving, and this would hydraulically put brake pressure to all four wheels to slow you down. As I say, this is in an emergency situation. But normally, get in the car, brake hold on, and you don't need to worry about using that parking brake on that journey. Now, at the front of the gear shift lever, we have the button to turn off at idle stop. So by default, this feature's on, and it's there to save you money, and also it's gonna improve not only fuel economy, but your CO2 emissions as well. So the way it works is that if you come to a standstill, and the conditions are right, so that would be uh, not too many electrical consumers inside the car, those kind of things. We've got a good charge in the battery. The car can actually pause its engine, saving you fuel. And as soon as you want to go again, just foot on the accelerator, it will restart the engine, so you're not paying for that fuel while you're stationary. So just at the front of the uh, driver's armrest, we've got some buttons and switches. So we'll go through those from the top to the bottom. Now the very first thing you'll see, top left hand corner, is the button that when we press it, it will fold in the door mirrors. And of course, when you press it again, it will fold them out for you. Next to that is a little slide switch with L and R at either side. So if we slide it to the L position, that allows us to, with a little pad underneath, adjust the left hand mirror. If we slide it through center across to the right position, we can do the right door mirror, perfect. And normally you'd leave it in the center position so you don't accidentally catch that if you were driving or getting in at the car. However, if you wanted to, you can slide it and keep it into that left position. What this will do is when you select reverse, the passenger's door mirror will actually tilt down so you can see, hopefully, keeping those alloy wheels in pristine condition, keeping them away from the curbs. Now we've also got a couple of buttons underneath. So we have the ability to lock and unlock the doors from inside the vehicle. Then we have the button to isolate some of the switches for the electric windows. So when we have the amber light on that switch, that means that every window except mine is isolated. If we want everybody in the car to have control of their own window, press it again so that we don't have the amber light on. Now all four windows in this car have got sort of two stages to them. So we can push the button partially down to get a partial movement of the window, or we can push it all the way down to have a one-touch motion. And obviously exactly the same would apply on the way up. So one stage and one-touch motion all the way to the top. 
Then working in from the side, we've got these uh, buttons by my right knee. So again, we'll work through them top to bottom. So right at the top, we have the Econ button. As you'd imagine, this is designed to improve the economy of the vehicle. And it will do that in a couple of different ways. So it will soften the throttle response. It also allows the air conditioning and the um, cruise control to run more efficiently from a fuel consumption point of view. Anytime you want to, you can turn Econ on or you can turn it off. Then working our way across, top left hand corner, we've got our vehicle stability assist button. The only time you'd want to reduce the effectiveness of this feature is if you were stuck in shallow mud or snow. So sometimes you need to spin those wheels to actually get out of a, a stuck situation. And as soon as you're moving, we'd turn it back on again. Next button across is for parking sensors. Dead simple, when we've got a green light at the top, that means they're active. If we push the button and we've not got a green light on there, then they're not active. Similarly, with the lane departure warning, when the green light's on, it's active. This is using the camera at the top of the screen to look for painted lines on the road. So if we get a little bit too close to those without indicating, it warns me. It'll give me audible and visual warning so that I can make corrective measures to actually stay in the lane. And the final one, bottom left hand corner, is for the ultrasonic sensors to disable them just for one locking cycle of the car. Now you can only turn this feature on when the ignition's off and you're ready to lock the car. So you'd push the button and it means that those ultrasonic sensors are now not active. Really the only time you're going to want to do this is if you're leaving your car but you want to lock it with a little bit of a gap in the windows. Because if you didn't disable it you might get some false alarms with the air movement inside the cabin triggering the alarm. So now if we take a look at the, the steering wheel, we have some controls on the front and also the stalks behind it. So on the left hand side, we have the uh, stalk responsible for our lighting. So indicators, probably the first thing we're going to use and one push down to a little resistance point and that will give us three flashes of the indicators. If we wanted them to be on for longer than that, say we were you know, just about to slip off the, uh, the motorway or dual carriageway, we can put them in the fixed position that will cancel either from the steering lock or when I push them back up again. Lighting. Now the great thing with HRV is that we've got auto lights on the car. So it's going to use the daytime sensors to actually look at the, the light levels and make sure that we've got the correct lighting. If you wanted to, for any reason, you can turn them off. Um, but I'd leave them in the auto position because that also allows me to have the high beam support system active. This is where it looks at uh, the road ahead, the speed we're doing and also if there are any vehicles on the road ahead. And as soon as it sees a, an oncoming vehicle or whether it's the tail lights of a car in front, it'll dip those beams down for you. So again, it's going to maximise your visibility in nighttime driving. So a reason that I personally would leave it in the auto position is just really easy. If you wanted to fix it into the um, side light position, that's one more rotation, and then we've got fixed dip beam as well. Of course, if you wanted a uh, main beam, you just push it away from you to give you a uh, main beam on. If you just wanted to give a flash to somebody to say, I'm here, you just pull it towards you momentarily. So inboard from that, we've got the fog lights. So as we rotate this center part, we turn our fog lights on at the front. And for the rear, it's one more rotation. And to turn the rears off, we push it through the same rotation again. And then to turn them all off, we're back to the off position. So the stalk on the right hand side, that is responsible for controlling the wipers at the front and also the rear of the vehicle. So if we have a small amount of rain or mist on the screen, we can just push the stalk up one position and it will give us one wipe of the screen. However, if there was a bit of dirt or some mud or something like that on the screen and we want some screen wash, we'd just pull that towards us and not only would we get the screen wash, but we'd get a few wipes of the screen as well. Now the next position is the auto position. So it will give us a wipe now because there's some moisture on the screen, but it's using that rain sensor that it would just picked up there to actually detect if there's any rain on the screen. Now I can adjust the sensitivity of this by using this little dial in the center, to make it more or less sensitive, depending the frequency that I would like the wipers to clean at. If I want a fixed rate, I can go one position further down, which is the low position, then we've got the high speed as well. So I would leave it 
in the auto position that's where i would be going and then right on the end we have the control for the rear screen so if i rotate it sort of top towards me we'll get some screen wash going onto the rear screen if i then rotate it away from me we're in the intermittent position a further one will take us into the fixed on position and then one more rotation which is like a sprung part of the the switch will give us more screen wash to the back so with my hands on the steering wheel, I've got access to these uh, paddles here with minus and plus on. This is only on the automatic version. And what it allows us to do if we're in D mode is momentarily either lower or raise the revs, depending what we want, sort of maybe more economy or more performance. And then it will revert back into traditional D mode for us. However, if we're in sport mode, what it will do, it's like having a seven speed gearbox that you can actually stay in fixed preset ratios. Again, just having a bit of interaction with that gearbox. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have some more buttons that we can use on the go to keep hands-free uh, driving as safe as possible. So right at the top, we have what looks like sort of three different screens. This is because when we press it, we can cycle through three different displays. We've got navigation, telephone, and also our audio. Just below that, we have the circular button with plus and minus at the um, sort of 12 o'clock and six o'clock. This is for our volume. Uh, we have left and right to actually go through different um, audio stations if we're listening to the radio. And the source button in the center would allow us to choose through the different sort of uh, mediums that we're listening to, maybe off a USB stick, or if it's different stations on um, DAB, FM, long wave, whatever we might choose. And at the bottom right hand corner, we have our menu button, allowing us to save some presets while we're on the go. Now, just below that, buttons I would sort of pull rather than push, we have the, uh, the pick-up receiver, uh, put-down receiver. This is also a back button for when we use the, the third button down here, which is for our hands-free Siri operation. Again, we could talk to our phone, asking it to do any functions that Siri can do for us. So on the right-hand side, we have some more buttons that we can push and the ones below that we can pull. So if we start right at the top, we have the main button. When we've pressed that, it allows us to use the features that are hidden behind LIM. So LIM is our speed limiter. So that's now active. What I could do, I could set that. And because I'm not moving, it's set at its minimum speed of 18 miles an hour. But what I could do, I could press my plus button, hold it down, we're up to now 30. What this means, when I'm driving, unless I go 100% full throttle, I'm not going to be able to drive through and accelerate past 30 miles an hour. So whatever zone I'm in, I can actually adjust that down or up. And then what we're going to do is not be able to accelerate past that speed. A really nice piece of mind feature. If we press it again, we have the intelligent speed limiter. This is where it uses the camera, just at the top there, the multi-purpose camera, to read the road speed signs and it pops them up on the dash so we can see we're in a 30, a 50 or a 60, whatever it might be. And that is what limits our speed. So it takes the information and sets that speed for us. What we have to do though is first of all we've got intelligent speed limiter on the screen we need to press the, the set button. You can cancel that anytime you want to because we have the cancel button in the the center or you can resume it once you've cancelled it. So RES at the top is for resume and obviously the set button at the bottom. Now just underneath that we've got some uh, buttons. We've got up arrows with an eye on it for information. If we have an amber warning light on the dash, we can see what that is. In this case, we've got a door open so I can see that on my screen. We've got SEL for select and reset, so we can move up and down. So at the moment, I can scroll through the different options and when we get to the one that looks like a couple of pages, what we can actually do, we can press uh, select on that and it will take us into the menu section so that you can really tailor the car to how you want it to, to look and actually act. So up on the, uh, the front of the roof, we have our buttons here for courtesy lights for passenger and also the driver. Um, in the middle, we have the push button here that will tilt the sunroof and push it forward to close it. And if we want to slide it backwards, we can do a little bit or we can push it all the way and it will go fully back. Any point you want to, you can stop it wherever you want it to be, but we'll close it for the moment. And what we've also got is a sunshade. So we can have complete control over how far 
backwards or forwards that sunshade actually is. Now in front of those we have a little rocker switch for the courtesy lights so they can be turned off as they are at the moment they can be uh, active when a door's open or we can have them permanently on so I'll turn those back off again for the moment. Now because we have um, an electronic mirror up front what this is going to do it automatically reduces the glare that you might get sometimes. Now if you didn't like this feature what you can do you can actually press the little power button there and it reverts to being a standard mirror. So looking straight ahead we've got really nice clear information. So on the left hand side we have our rev counter and at the bottom of that because it is an automatic it'll tell us whether we're in park or drive or sport mode. Now at the top we'll see as we are at the moment we've got our lights in auto so we can see a confirmation of that. We can see that the parking brake is on there as well and in the center we've got our speedo nice big uh, analog display that we've got there with miles per hour on the outside and kilometers an hour on the inside. Now on the right hand side we've got our information display that as we mentioned you can scroll through using the buttons at the, uh, the base sort of area of the steering wheel and scroll through. At the bottom of that is our fuel gauge. Now this is a digital gauge so we've got bars going along so obviously the more bars uh, the more uh, full the fuel tank is and underneath we have the icon of a petrol pump with an arrow pointing to the left. This is simply to remind us that our fuel flap is on the left hand side of the car so when we're pulling up at a fuel station we know which side to get the fuel pump to pull up to. So to keep you at your ideal temperature we've got our climate controls and also our heated seat uh, buttons on this touchscreen panel right in front of us. So what we've got on my right hand side here is the button for the, uh, the heated seats and on the left hand side the passenger has their own control over that there as well. And if we look at the buttons that we've got on here we've got up and down for temperature so red being up and the blue being the down. We've got the different modes so where the actual air is going to be coming through on the car whether it's feet, screen, coming to the centre. We've got our fan speed up and down. Then we've got auto on off for the actual system itself. We've got the synchronise button, the air conditioning button, recirculate rear and front. So we'll go through what those are going to do for you, how they're going to benefit you. So first of all if we turn the system on what we'll see is that we've got 17 degrees for the passenger whereas I've chosen 21 degrees. Now if it was just me in the car I could press the synchronise button and it takes the passenger side also to my chosen temperature of 21 degrees. So that's perfect. Then what I can do is I can actually turn the air conditioner off if I want to so I could just have the heater on there or I can actually turn the air conditioning on as you'd imagine. Next button along is recirculate. What this will do for us it will keep recirculating the air inside the cabin if that's what we'd like. If we would prefer fresh air to be coming into the cabin we can just turn that off so there's no amber light above it. Then we have the uh, rear button there. This is going to actually heat up the elements in the rear screen and also the door mirrors to defog or de-ice those glasses. We'll turn that off. And the final one on the left hand side is front. Now when I press this the fan speed will pick up a little bit and what that's going to do for us, I'll just turn that off, it's going to use the dehumidified, sort of the climate controlled air force it all through to the front screen to keep it as clear as is possible for us. So it focuses all of its energy on that front screen. Now if we wanted to we can press the auto button and what auto will do it'll work out based on my temperature which vents it should use and what speed it should use as well. So if you just want it 21 degrees in the cabin the best thing to do pop it on auto and ear away. Right now we're on the home screen for Connect. We can see all of the, um, the tabs there. So we've got navigation, we've got one for our phone, uh, information, audio, settings, and we've pre installed the AHA app as well. So, top left hand corner, we have the, the navigation. So we tap on where to, and we can put in an address. We'll start building our history and our favourites. But where it is a little bit different, we've actually pre populated the Honda dealership addresses. Now something a lot of people would want to do is set their home address. Now the easiest way to do this is to press the go home button 
I'm going to imagine for the moment I'm on my driveway, so I'm going to use my current location and that's it done. Next time we're away from home and we choose go home, the system will navigate us back to that destination we've just set. Brilliant. Now, to go back to the home screen, I'm just going to use one of these soft touch buttons on the right hand side. And underneath that, we've got volume, menu and also back. So we've got buttons down the side and also we can operate it from the centre as well. So that's our navigation. But just along from that, we have our phone button. Now, when we press this for the very first time, it's going to say there's no phone connected. Would you like to add one? Which, of course, we do. So I'm going to tap on yes. Uh, get my phone, it's saying make sure the Bluetooth is on and continue, so I'm going to go into settings, go into Bluetooth and hopefully they're searching for each other, so the name of your phone will come up here, mine is just iPhone, and it will give me a code, so I'm just making sure that number is correct, I'm going to use the, the pair button on my phone, tap OK on the screen, and once they've just made that connection, you should see pairing process was successful. So now we've got that, we are connected, and we can actually go, um, if we go back on there, so we can here, uh, we can have, if we want to, our contact details synchronized every time we connect the phone. Um, so we'll turn that on, perfect stuff. So every time we come into the car, if we've added a new contact, it will see that and we'll be able to access it on the phone. Now we can see my iPhone is connected. So I could either go back here or back to the home screen. I'm going to press home so we can continue on. So the third icon along is for info. Now when you press the info button, you'll get information about the car, how it's driving, like a trip computer. So again, a nice useful thing that you can have up on the Connect unit while you're driving along. Right, so in the bottom left hand corner, we have the audio tab. We'll tap on that one and we can see at the moment our source is DAB, Digital Radio, and we're listening to Capital UK. If we wanted to change to a different station, we can just tap on there. We've got a different one. Uh, so we've now got uh, Cap Extra reloaded. If we wanted to store that as a preset, tap on the menu button to the side. We'll save it as a preset and we'll choose any button there. We'll just go on to number one and that will now be preset number one saved for us. Now that's really easy. Uh, next one along is settings. So this is where, you, again, you can personalise how the system's going to work for you, what things are going to look like, if you want beeps when you press buttons, if you don't want beeps. So it's really to personalise it for your tastes. So the final one we have is AHA. This is a pre-installed audio app that we've put here on the car for you. Now, what this will do, once it's tethered to a wireless device, so you could use your smartphone or a Wi-Fi dongle, it will allow you to listen to audiobooks, uh, podcasts, or even radio stations from across the water. So right at the top of the unit, we have some hard keys and also the slot to pop your CDs into. So top left-hand corner, we have the ability to change the brightness for daytime, also for nighttime, and if you wanted to, you could completely darken the screen. We'll pop that back to how it was though. Uh, next to that, we have the eject button if there was a CD in, and of course we have the, uh, the power off for the audio. So to operate the hazard warning lights, simple push of the button there, obviously when you don't need it, they're back off again. Now we're at the back of the car, we can open the tailgate as long as the car itself is unlocked. So just underneath the H badge is where we've got the little pad to open it, and we can see a nice size boot now. So when we're in, um, on the right hand side is quite disguised, but uh, just underneath here is where you would find your compressor and temporary repair kit, just in case you get a puncture. We'll just pop that back up. And then something you're going to use more frequently is this underfloor storage. So we have a, a large amount of storage area underneath here, and of course we can put this board straight back across, making it a double deck boot area. Then just simply close it down. So for fueling your uh, HRV, there is a little lever just when you're sat in the driver's seat by your right foot. So when we pull that, it will pop open. And of course now what we have is a screw cap to release. And when we're fueling up, what we just do is rest it up there so it's not going to damage the bodywork of the car. When we're fueled up, you'll find it clicks off so you can't actually put too much pressure on and then close it too. 
So for fitting Isofix child safety seats into your HRV, they can fit on the driver side or indeed the passenger side. So the lower mounting points are just inside here and both sides have the top tether points to make sure it's as firmly fixed into the car as it possibly can be. So there are many combinations of seat folding with your HRV. Now to fold this side down on the driver's side, we get the rocker at the top, pull that, and we'll fold it flat down. Now, of course, you can obviously do that on the passenger side as well. And to push it back up into place, simple as that little motion there. And to raise the bases, you just grab the base, push it up, and lock it. So that we've now got a massive amount of storage space in the rear footwell area. When you've got three rear seat passengers in the HRV, you'll want to put into place the middle three-point seat belt. So first of all, we take it from the roof lining area, pull it down, and you'll notice there are two tongs on here. So the smaller one locks in here, and the larger one into this one. To remove it, it's traditional over here. And then what we need to do is use this tong or blade to actually remove it from that mechanism so that we can then put it away into the roof lining area. So if you just have one or two rear seat passengers, they can benefit from the centre armrest if they wish, or if they like a little more room, it can just stay in place. To activate the child locks, if you only want the rear door to be opened from the handle on the outside, just push this little lever down, and when you want them deactivated, we just push it back up again. Thank you for watching this handover video on your new HRV. We hope it's been enjoyable and informative for you. Now, if you have any questions that we didn't address in this video, please feel free to contact your local dealer where they'd be delighted to fill in any of those gaps.